A farmer's market plays many roles in a community. It's an opportunity to get fresh produce. It's a revenue generator for local coffers, and it's a place to gather as friends. There's also usually handmade crafts and value-added goodies like breads, cakes, and jams. I'm author Gwen Elise Clayton, and I love farmer's markets, craft fairs, street fairs, and all that good stuff. Where I live in Northeast Kentucky, there are several farmer's markets to patronize. I live in what's called the tri-state area of Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia. I could easily hop back and forth across the Ohio and Big Sandy Rivers if I wanted to in the search of farm fresh produce. The farmer's market season out here in Climate Zone 6B runs May through October. As the season starts to wind down this year, I thought it would be a good time to talk with organizers and vendors to see how their 2022 went. This episode is part one of a two-part series, Community Guide to Farmers Markets. We start in Greenup County, where I talk with Linda Heineman and Ann Stevens of the Greenup County Cooperative Extension Office, which puts on the farmer's market. First of all, what does an extension office do? There are extension offices in all 120 counties in the state of Kentucky, and our role is to pretty much disseminate out information from the University of Kentucky. We are the arm of the university, and we work with our local uh, individuals in regards to research-based information, community support, um, anything that they may need. We, we assist our local farmers market and here in Greenham County uh, we have a unique farmers market that we also have not only farmers but we also have um, artisans or crafters as some may call them. Uh, the farmers market has been open since 2004. Uh, at that time it was located in a church parking lot um, and during the pandemic um, you know, there were lots of restrictions, but the, the farmer's market relocated to the property here at the extension office because we are fortunate as an extension agent or agency that we have about 10 acres here, I believe. Mm-hmm. So we have lots of, we have lots of land to work with. And really, our property is located right in the center of the county and right off of US 23 at a very uh, prominent intersection. So it's it's good for directions. It's good for everyone in our community. We want this property to become a destination for a lot of different reasons. We want people to utilize our services. And one of those that we're very proud of is the farmer's market. So McConnell House is our neighbor. And the extension service, our district board, actually owns all the property here where our office, bu- our office building is located. And uh, the majority of the property that surrounds the McConnell House, mm-hmm. actually. So we are great neighbors with the McConnell House. That canopy of trees that is on our side of the house is such a beautiful area it's a great location there's always a breeze there's the shade from those trees that side porch of the house is a great location for the live music that is a part of our market the first Saturday of every month during market season it's important that people understand that when you shop at the the farmers market that is affiliated with the extension service uh, there you know, part of our responsibility as extension agents is to oversee the operations and make sure that all of the rules and regulations that are published by the Department of Agriculture are followed at our farmers market you know the term farmers market is something that people use Uh, But it doesn't always mean exactly the same thing. Uh, To us, all of the certifications that are required by the the agencies that oversee things like food safety, you know, our our health department Mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the Department of Agriculture, there are rules that must be followed for food safety. And our role is to make sure that all of our producers 
uh, all of the farmers and the, the farms and the businesses that do what is called value added products, things that uh, say the, the growers have an item and they are using that item to create something new like jams and jellies and relish and things like that. There is a certification that must be obtained by those people to be certified by the state to be a seller. Just like when you go to the grocery store, you expect that what you're purchasing has been manufactured in a way that it is safe for you to consume. You assume that that has been done if you're buying from a grocery store, and, and it has. There's a regulation process there. So the certified farmer's market also follows very similar, and in many instances, the very same regulations. Mm -hmm. There is meat that is sold at the farmer's market. There are those products that are value added, things that have been processed. Uh, and that is at a home-based facility, it, there is a, a process for safety that applies to those producers uh, as well. And that's what you're going to find at a certified farmer's market. It's not always the same as something that you could just drive by and see on the side of the road. A lot of times people find great things at those places, Absolutely. Uh, but it's not the same thing as the certified farmer's market that you will find affiliated with the extension service, which is what we have here in Greenup County. I, w I would also say that several of our members that are part of the certified farmer's market are also um, part of a larger uh, program called Kentucky Proud, mm -hmm. and that's pretty a familiar branding across the state. And um, Anne and I have discovered that several of our vendors are veterans, so they are also they also use the labeling of homegrown heroes. So you can also uh, support your local veterans at the Greenup County Farmers Market. We. Our farmer's market does not allow resale. You know that the products that you are buying at our market were grown and produced by the person who is selling it to you. There's a lot of people that travel away and buy things, which is, is a great thing if, if it's something that isn't grown here in season or if it's early or late in season. Um, there are times that you might find something like that at our market, but if, if our vendors have something that came from somewhere other than their own farm, you're going to see signage that explains that. Absolutely. We follow this, uh, it's a Kentucky calendar that says, you know, what crops are in season. So that's the crops that you should see at your local farmer's market. And we try to make sure that consumers are aware that um, at certain times of the year is when certain types of produce will be available at your local farmers market. And we really like to support local farmers growing their own produce because one, it's often picked at its peak freshness and that's when it's most nutritious. And uh, we, are, we just think it's so important to make sure that we are supporting uh, nutrition in our area. Uh, one of our co-workers, Laura Pullen, she helps us uh, with nutrition education at the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we're getting good wholesome products out there into our economy as well. And then um, in regards to the meat, you know, that the meat has to be processed a certain way and has to be inspected by the United States Department of Agriculture to be re resold at a farmer's market. So we make sure all of our vendors are following those requirements as well. It is not a requirement that they live in Greenup County. We actually have a very structured farmer's market committee. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an executive committee uh, that's comprised of a president, vice president, secretary, and jack of all trades is what I would call her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they are our executive committee and um, they take applications, review those applications, um, they try to balance our market with different products. You know, we don't want every vendor selling exactly the same thing. We want a good variety. Um, and I would say they, would, they don't turn people away if they don't have the certifications. They are very helpful individuals. Mm -hmm. So if someone needs a cert certain training certificate, they help them understand how to obtain that certificate. 
um, so that they can get them approved to sell at the farmer's market. So there is an application process, it is reviewed, and then they are notified uh, of approval or denial. And unfortunately, they, they have had to deny a few in the past, mm -hmm. um, just making sure that all products are a variety. We do want to ensure that what you're, what you're buying, uh, whether it be uh, produce or you know, our artisans and our crafters are a big part of our market. And that, uh, that creative economy is something that we want to support and encourage people to participate in. Uh, we, we love to see the, the artists and the artisans and the crafters, uh, the makers, that those handmade, homemade items are a, a great part of our culture. Mm -hmm. And we, we love when people come to the market to look for those things and to purchase those things. And oftentimes, our customers are creating relationships with those people, and they will seek them out uh, when we are in an off season to continue to purchase from them and, and we love when that happens and we we want like Linda said we want people to be successful we want people to want to be part of our market both on the vendor side and on the consumer yeah. side we want people to come we want it to grow uh, but it is important that we are as the advisors we want to help everyone be successful but we also want to make sure that we're keeping that high quality reputation of the market as we do grow how do you decide what days and hours you're going to be set up it's been a lot of trial and error yeah <laughs> uh, the farmers market has went through different days of the week and different times um, you may see some change next year but we are for sure Saturdays are a great time. You know, that's when most people are off work. And so the farmer's market is open on Saturdays from eight to one. Um, and then, you know, traditionally this year, they were open on Thursdays from three to seven. Um, and it was a little bit slower on Thursday evening. So they may, they may change that next year. But we try to watch customer patterns, mm -hmm. traffic patterns, when people shop. And so that is something that we're all still trying to learn as well. Mm -hmm. We would love to have an evening market uh, that you know, so people could maybe stop by on their way home from work. Uh, but we're still trying to figure out in this location how to really make that work. Saturday morning is certainly the biggest day. Yes. Part of the proceeds raised by the farmer's market go back into the programs and services offered by the Cooperative Extension Office. That wraps things up for this episode. Be sure to tune back in next Tuesday for part two of the Community Guide to Farmer's Markets when we talk to folks from the Ironton Farmer's Market the AKY Makers Market on the Square, and vendors who worked multiple markets. Until then, give this video a thumbs up if you found it interesting or informative, and be sure to subscribe to the Rivervine YouTube channel for more news, features, and commentary from the utopia of Rivervine. I'm your host, Gwen Elise Clayton. I drop videos every Tuesday evening. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.